Hi, Daniel and Christina. Um, I'm so glad that I get to meet with you again. Um, I wanted to first start by thanking you for taking the time to come and meet with me. I know with the busy schedules that we have, um, it is often hard to get together and meet and talk like this. So I just want to thank you um, for coming in and talking to me about William's progress. Um, I know with email and things like that, we are in contact with how he is doing, but um, it is so great to just look through his work and really show you and describe to you the scores and then our educational plan with him. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I'm so glad to see you both again. Um, I wanted to start by talking with you about the educational philosophy that we use in our classroom um, and that I believe in. Um, I know that this is something that we have gone over before um, with curriculum night and, you know, opening our school year with this, but I just wanted to um, emphasize the importance that I believe in the constructivist learning theory that I, I really strive for students to make learning meaningful to them. Um, you know, I don't really believe in the way I was taught with, you know, just the teacher standing up there and lecturing and me taking notes and listening the whole time. I really believe in the students making um, content really, really important to them, things that they can use inside and outside of school. So um, I, I really, really love when they collaborate together, are given hands-on activities, um, being able to create their learning based on what they have learned in the past and making it more meaningful even now. So, you know, as educators, I believe it's our job to be the observer more so um, than being kind of the control aspect of that. I, I really believe in just observing and it is so neat when we are able to just observe what these students can do. Um, so, you know, I, I believe in the I do, then we do together, and then you do approach where the students are able to kind of um, get the content modeled by me. And then um, we do it together, and then the students are able to really just show their learning um, through so many different different activities, but I am able to just kind of observe what they have learned from me um, and make it meaningful to them. So um, another thing that I really believe in is um, Howard Gardner's um, eight multiple intelligences, um, you know, that people can learn best through. And so I, I truly believe in, um, you know, the visuals and students learning through music and so many different um, ways that students can learn best. And so I really try and incorporate a lot of visuals, especially for my ELL learners, what works best for them because, it, you know, it is my job to meet your child where they are at and what ways they learn best. And so me using the constructivist learning theory and um, multiple intelligences is huge, you know, and incorporating that and really meeting the students where they are. So I really want the students to make their own connections and relate the content into their own lives because I think this will be really be more meaningful to them in their future. So that's kind of just my educational philosophy and really what I believe in um, and kind of how I teach that that's where it really stems from. So the next point I wanted to um, discuss with you is the differentiation piece and I know that through seesaw videos and recordings and all of those things that I share with you all, you're able to really see um, the small groups that we do each day. I also differentiate based on assessments um, like quick checks, one-on-one -on -one activities so that I'm able to really um, meet your child, especially you know, William, when, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with him and so many other different students. So, um, you know, when William first got to me, I, I read the different um, assessment activities in the assessment questions so that he had um, the advantage of being able to know what the question was asking just like all of his peers um, and be able to show me what he knew just because he may have not been able to read um, the entire question I wanted to still give him that equal and you know fair chance of being able to answer that question so that is just a small way I differentiate based on the assessments um, if students aren't able to read or aren't able to understand a question I might reword it for them to be able to understand it so that they are 
are able to answer it to the best of their knowledge. Um, I often differentiate, though, based on small groups. Um, William's currently working with a group of four other students during um, literacy and math time, so they are able to you know, really work together with different small group leveled books. Um, we often work with phonics skills, vocabulary sorts, all different activities. Reader's Theater is a great one where the students are able to do a play and work on fluency reading, um, which we will go over what makes a fluent reader and how we can really increase that with William um, to, you know, have him continue to grow with his fast scores as he's already doing. But, you know, reading comprehension is so important, remembering what they read. Um, so we use this in a variety of ways with small group reading, um, and that really helps differentiate the skills for William. So, you know, I whether a group struggles with a phonics skill or whether they're struggling with reading fluently or clearly, then I will work with that small group and kind of do the same approach with I do, we do together, and then they are able to read on their own um, with a partner or small group where each student takes a turn to read, um, and, and I am often able to check in with them as they are reading, which is an, an awesome opportunity for both the students and me to be able to kind of be that observer and see how they are doing. Um, it, so differentiation is so important. Um, when I'm just teaching whole group, I'm not able to meet the needs of just individual students. And so small group really gives me the opportunity to work with um, the different needs that each student brings. So it gives me the opportunity to really work on what phonic skills the student might need versus um, you know, a higher chapter book that another student needs. So it just depends, but I I feel like differentiation and small group is very, very important to me in helping the students succeed to the best that they can. So, um, you know, if you have any questions about differentiation, um, just let me know. But um, differentiation is so important as teachers, you know, and how we can meet the needs of the 21 students that we have in our classroom. So. Um, we are next going to move on to test scores. Um, if you have any questions at any point, please feel free to stop me. Um, I know that we went over these fast scores from the fall time, um, but I wanted to show you these in what he took in the winter because it is such incredible, incredible growth. Um, he, William, has made such incredible strides, and Daniel and Christina, you will be so proud at the things that you have done at home because that makes such a huge impact um, and the work that he's doing here at school has just truly made a difference those two at home and at school so um, I appreciate all that you are doing to um, help him just really succeed so I want to turn your attention um, to these scores this is um, yeah, oops go back. This is kind of, I, I filled this out and this will be in his binder for you all to always see, but um, this, let me move this up here. Um, this is kind of a school to home connection, what you can continue to do at home for William to meet his goals, um, read with fluency at home, and I will go over with you that you can also take home what makes a fluent reader um, and how we can ha help him grow with that. But, you know, he is doing phenomenal in math. Um, just continue to work on those daily math facts. I cannot believe, you know, he started in basic edition and he is already grown in multiple multiplication and division. So just doing so, so wonderful. So just continue, you know, that double, triple digit subtraction addition problems that we're currently working on. Um, I send home those phonics skills each week. So those can always be something that he can practice, um, both at home and at school. So, um, I wanted to turn your attention, as you can see here, um, the fall grade level norm or what um, the, what we expect second graders to be at in the fall with the FAST score. Um, remember, the FAST score is it, how many words read per minute, and the accuracy is making sure that students aren't skipping words, adding in words where they don't belong. Um, Basically, the goal is what we want students to be at in second grade is 56 words per minute read with 95% accuracy. So as we look at William's score in the fall, it was 12 words per minute 
with 44% accuracy. And that was something that, considering he was an ELL student, had just come from Brazil less than six months before that, um, these are variables that we, you know, need to take into account because, um, you know, these are ways that I can help him being an ELL student and things that I can help you um, work on with him at home. And so, the things that we wanted to really target is to get the accuracy up, you know, making sure he wasn't adding in different words that weren't supposed to be there um, and just increasing the accuracy score while also, you know, increasing the words per minute as he continued um, getting those phonics skills, working with small groups and that differentiation and those types of things. So um, in the winter, so just a few weeks ago, the norm for a second grade student is 84 words read per minute and with 95% accuracy still. And I just want you to see, look at this incredible, incredible growth from William. Um, he he read 63 words per, per minute with 91% accuracy. So he is just a little bit below, but I, I don't even want you to look at, oh, he's below still, because I want you to really focus on, look at this incredible growth. He went from 63 words, or he went from 12 words per minute to 63 words per minute. That right there is 51 words per minute growth. That is truly incredible. And you know, that only being 4% below in accuracy. I, I can just see the way William reads with me. Um, and, and he has just grown, grown so, so much with that. So when we're thinking about the spring score with 101 words per minute, I know that's quite a big jump with that 95% accuracy, but just the way that he is continuing to read, the way you are both committing to working with him at home and what he is doing in the classroom, his motivation is just incredible that I can really, really see the growth that he is going to make. So I really quickly wanted to go over with you um, the plan for William and what we <clears throat> want to plan on for the next few months for him to reach that goal in the springtime. So um, this is kind of just going over with you um, what a fluent reader really is. That accuracy, again, 95% is that benchmark goal that we want to hit not eliminating words, um, not adding words where they shouldn't be, expression, so that's how we use with the reader's theater, talking like the character would talk, um, not really like a robot, punctuation, stopping when they see periods, pausing with commas, those types of things, um, you know, not being a super speed reader, but not going super slow, talking kind of naturally, um, and then the comprehension, remembering what they are reading. So through this small group and so many different one-on-one -on -one phonics skill activities that I do with William, I'm really trying to target these fluent reader checklists. Um, so I'm sending this home with you so that you are kind of able to check, oh, is he comprehending what he's learning after he read that to me? Um, and those types of things. But the plan um, for William with considering his strengths, working so, so hard and his motivation and growth that he's already made in the last three months, um, we're just going to continue with this differentiation. I feel that's really, really working. With the increase, I really want to incorporate more reader's theater so that he is able to work on that expression with peers. Um, you know, twice a week, I'm going to continue working with a phonics skill one-on-one -on -one with him, as well as in small group with different sorts, sounding out words to really help with that accuracy of knowing the words and not adding in words that don't make sense. Um, another thing that I want to work on is, you know, really, really just working on the pacing of it that, you know, and not going too fast, not going too slow of words he doesn't know so that he is able to stay on track and sound out words um, so he's not feeling rushed or any of that. So, you know, you are doing such an incredible job. I will continue sending fluency passages to you that we're working on during differentiation so you can kind of work on that at home um, just to really continue working on that words per minute read during that, you know, those timed one minute passages. So I just want to thank you so much, both of you for joining me today. Um, 
William has made incredible growth, and I just cannot wait to see his scores um, in the springtime. So I will continue to communicate daily with you, send you things that you can work on at home, but thank you so much for everything. It's so great.